Here we go with week five. We're going to start with a look at some safety fouls. Some we missed, some we did not miss. We need to get all these gentlemen. The first play we're going to take a look at, I want you to listen for the whistle at the end of the play. Players, the important thing to remember here is you do not play until you hear the whistle. You have to be aware of the rules and when this runner is down. Opponent contact here takes him in the wall. He's down. Obviously the whistles are going to be a little late here. It does not give you the right for a late and unnecessary hit. We did need a flag here on this play. Players, you need to know the rules. The next play. Uh, we're looking at a category of a defenseless player and the category here is the player coming down the right side on K. It's a player who receives a blindside block when the blocker is moving towards or parallel to his own end line and approaches the opponent from behind or from the side. And the prohibited contact against this protected player is forcibly hitting the defenseless player's head or neck area with the helmet, face mask, forearm, or shoulder. And this is on uh, page 68 of the rule book. You really need to know, that, know this. And this happens a lot on the uh, free kicks and long scrimmage kicks attempts. That K player coming down the right sideline is in a category of a defenseless player and he's protected from this blindside block. You're going to see this on the kicks. Here it is. Lowers the shoulder and delivers a forceful blow to the head or neck area. The covering official has a flag and more important, continues to officiate the play. Nice job. Next play, let's take a look at the quarterback, um, and this could be any runner. As soon as he sticks that ball over the wall, he has given himself up, and he is not a free target. He's down. Whether a whistle sounds or not, that runner is down. As soon as he extends his arms over the wall with the ball, he has given himself up. He is not free game. The official here, the covering uh, official trailing the play, has a flag, and that's what we want. Players, lay off these runners when they put the ball out over the edge of the wall. No free shots. Nice job here by the referee. The next play, it's an interception. I want you to watch the action by the orange player at the end of the play after it's over. We're going to have a backwards pass here. Then the runner's going to get tackled. And I want you to watch the action by the white player on the orange player after the play is over. It's not vicious. Right there. Unnecessary. Late. We don't need that kind of action in our game. Again, we'll look at it one more time. Covering official has a flag. Again, it's not vicious. We just, we just don't want that kind of contact or action on the field. Nice flag here by the covering official. Next play, uh, here's one we missed. The receiver is going to be down, and a defender takes about two to three steps after he's down and takes a free shot at him. And we missed this one right in front of two or three officials got this boxed in. I don't know how we missed this, but this is a late hit. It's unnecessary. It's also a cheap shot. We do need a flag down on this play. Take a look at it. Runners down. One, two, three steps and a shot. Free shot, unnecessary, late. Flag it, gentlemen. We missed this one. Next play we're going to take a look at is a, uh, another category of a protected player, a defenseless player. And remember, a receiver attempting to catch a pass or who has completed the catch and has not had time to protect himself or who has not clearly become a runner. And of course, he's protected from those headshots that we talked about earlier in the film. Second player coming in, dips his shoulder to the head, in fact, takes the player's uh, helmet off. Back judge and the wing official have flags down. We have two flags down on this play. Excellent job by the covering officials here. Second player coming in, second defender, dips his shoulder and hits the uh, helmet neck area with his shoulder. That receiver has not established himself as a runner yet. He is a defenseless player. We wanted flags. We had two. Excellent. A little bit of deja vu here. This is the same play we saw earlier, except we just flipped it to the other side. K player coming down the left side of the formation is protected from that shot to his head. He's protected from that blindside block. He's in a defenseless posture. Look at it again. Shot to the head. 
our player dips his shoulder and takes the player's helmet off. One more time. Our official up there at the top of the screen sees it, he processes it, and he does throw a flag right there. So we got a good call. This one's simple. End of the play, horse collar. Can't miss it, and we don't. Look at it one more time. Right there. Nice job by the covering officials. And let's uh, close these uh, safety fouls. This last play we take a look at, we're going to look at it third, three times. Look in the bottom right corner here. Little scuffle, the white player right there is going to throw a punch. That is a flag. We have it. That is an ejection. This player is not going to be playing this week. One more time. Keep an eye on it. Officials did here. Nice job converging. That punch is illegal. We want a flag. And he was uh, ejected, and he's going to sit out this week. Nice job by the covering officials here. Check out the slot motion receiver to the right side of the formation up on the left side of the screen. What's he do? An illegal pick play right there. This is our back judge's key to the left. He's looking to the left. He sees it. We're going to look at it two more times. And he launches. That is an excellent call. That's the kind of calls we want to make, gentlemen. Beautiful. Offensive pass interference, illegal pick. It springs the receiver for a catch over the middle and a long gain. Our back judge sees it, and uh, we're going to move back about 10 yards, actually half the distance here. Top of the screen, we've got illegal contact down there around the 10-yard line. The ball snapped at about the 18. This is the uh, wings key, and we do not want that contact more than five yards downfield. And here we're about uh, seven or eight yards downfield right there. That is illegal contact. It actually throws the receiver off his pattern, so we want a flag there. The receiver at the right side of the screen, he's going to run a stop and go. The cornerback's going to take a step away from him with a hold. Right there, takes a step away. We've got a hold. Uh, it ends in a touchdown, and what our official there on the right, that's his key. He sees it. I know he sees it. He reaches for his flag, but he doesn't launch. We'll get a close-up of that. What you need to keep in mind... Uh, when you see this in the future, if you see the foul, go ahead and launch the flag. This will keep your instincts high, keep your skill level high. Good job by the wing official. He sees the foul, watch his left hand, reaches, and doesn't launch. In the future, go ahead and launch, keep your skill level and your instincts high, throw the flag. Let's take a look at our ref here. Good coverage of the play quarterback releases the ball. The referee believes he has intentional grounding, but he's not sure, and that's fine. He's going to come in and have a brief discussion with his crew. Gets in, talks about it briefly, and then gets out of it and makes his decision. nice job there. Now this play I gotta set it up. We're inside probably 15 seconds left in the game. The team with the ball is down by a touchdown and if you look back at the rule book page 34 and 35 a new rule this year is the three yard restriction applies to a static back unless he is five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Remember the three yard restriction that's why we want our refs three yards outside the guard the receiver on the line of scrimmage that is stationary has to be three yards outside the guard. So does any back stationary in the backfield unless he is five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Here, this receiver is about two yards behind the line of scrimmage. This is an illegal formation. Live ball foul. We want a flag at the snap. This could have uh, caused us some problems if we did not have this flag and this play ended up in a touchdown. Let's take a look. Our referee has the flag. It wasn't a touchdown, but this was a great example of a crew and a referee that has 100% focus on a play at the end of the game. He discusses with the coach here, find out what the coach wants, and announces.
superb. We've got a similar play here. Static receiver. Look at him. Inside three yards. 100% focus. This did call back a touchdown. We have got to have this call. We have got to have 100% focus on each play. Excellent job by this crew. Okay, the crews need to communicate with each other on the field when the plays are in progress and at the end of the plays. And here we're going to look at several examples of excellent communication between the crewmates. And uh, the first play we're going to look at, uh, the H is on the left side, back judge is deep. Let's watch our H and B at the end of the play. The H is going to indicate he's got the runner not contacting the wall. The back judge is going to read this, and even though the runner did not contact the wall, doesn't necessarily mean a touchdown. The back judge has the runner short of the goal line, and he has a spot about the half uh, yard line or so. But look at the communication between the two officials. And then the back judge comes up with a spot just short of the goal line. Excellent. Excellent job here. And on the next play, uh, this is going to be a tight play for a first down. And remember, we don't measure. Watch our H at the end of the play on the left side of the screen, indicating to his referee that he has a first down. Right there. Good communication. That's what we want. On this play... The back judge is going to check with his wing official before going up, looks over, wing official confirms that the runner has not contacted the wall, back judge signals after confirming. Good work there. Excellent job again. Uh, what do we have here? This is going to be a, uh, I think it's a long kick return for a touchdown. And there's a ni nice work. Watch our back judge. He's there at the five yard line. He's going to get back to the goal line. And he's going to come across the goal line, check with his wing before signaling touchdown. The wing racing down the sidelines has wall responsibility. Back judge confirms clear of the wall and signals touchdown. Excellent communication. Next play, um, I don't think I've ever seen a referee move this quick downfield. Then, not only move quick, but stop solid on the goal line and set up to rule on the play. We've got an excellent display of athleticism here by our referee and our wing on the left side of the screen. I think it's an interception returned for a touchdown. Great wheels by both officials. Uh, remember, the wing's coming down. He's got the wall responsibility. The ref squares up on the goal line. He confirms with the wing that the runner has not contacted the wall here. The only thing they could have done a little bit better is uh, wing, when you square up, referee, go head up, signal together. If uh, the runner's way ahead of the play, that'll be the ref signal all the way. If you're this close, ref, wait for that wing to square up, and you can both go up together, and it looks real good. Nice job, nice display of athleticism on this play, guys. Real good job. Last two plays in this series are back-to-back. -back. we got first and ten at the five going out. Look at the left side. Look at our wing. That's a tight play at the line to gain. Remember, we do not measure in this league. Our H looks across the field, gets the cross field spot, sets it up short of the line to gain. Now we've got uh, second and short. Watch our wing again. We'll get in a little closer. But he's got to look across the field, cross field spot, picks it up, and he indicates to his chain crew, we have a first down. Move the chains. We're not measuring. We don't miss a beat. Nice work. Great job here by the wings on this crew. Okay, let's switch our focus now to some IDs or illegal defenses. Seeing them quite often. We got to get these guys uh, first. Two plays are illegal twists. Look at the orange defensive line of scrimmage. We've got an illegal twist here that results in a sack and we miss this call. We can't miss this umpires. Look at it a look, look at it one more time a little slower. Look at the center and the nose guard. They do a twist and they get a sack. That is illegal. We do need a flag on this. Let's look at another illegal twist and this umpire does get this call. We've got the illegal twist and the flag not sure if we had a completed pass that was called back or not. The call is correct. That's what it looks like, guys. 
That's the call we need right there. Illegal twist, illegal defense. Okay, the next two illegal defenses we take a look at. Look at this play. See if you can pick it up here. Our back judge certainly does. We're going to have to break this one down. It, these next two plays were just the examples of excellent work by our two back judges. Just superb work by these back judges. Um, and both plays, again, are similar, dealing with covering up these motion receivers, the depth of the belt, and everything else. So let's break it down. Um, look at our receivers on the right side. Um, this one, he's covered up by that defender. That defender can be inside the belt. Receiver number two, he's covered up by a defender. That defender can be inside the belt. And remember, inside the five, the belt reduces. So here we're snapping from the five. The belt is, the end of the belt is the goal line. But these two defenders can be inside that goal line because they are covering up a receiver. This third defender here, he's inside the belt. Looks like he's setting up about the two and a half yard line, but he's not head up on a receiver. Therefore, He's illegal. He needs to be back behind that goal line. As soon as the ball is snapped, we have an illegal defense. This was just a top-notch call by a very, very proficient back judge. And uh, that's the kind of calls we're looking for this year, gentlemen. Excellent work by this back judge. Now here's another very technical call by an excellent back judge. Same type thing. The defender is tracking the receiver, and at the last minute, the defender on the right side jumps off his receiver to pick up the receiver coming across, but the ball is snapped when that uh, defender on the right side is caught between his receiver and the one coming across the field. Right there, the ball snapped. He's caught. That defender is not head up on either receiver. He's caught in the middle. That is an illegal defense at the snap. Basically, that defender gambled and lost. He would have had to get up, head up on that motion receiver for him to be legal. He did not, and therefore, our back judge was correct with the flag. See him make his move there, and the ball is snapped. He is not head up on that receiver. We do want a flag for an illegal defense because that uh, defender is not head up on a receiver, and he's inside the belt. We got a problem. Excellent job. Excellent job by that back judge. We're going to keep looking at the goal line mechanics until uh, everyone's on the same page. All levels of, levels of football, wings, when the ball snapped inside the five, we get to the goal line. Only difference in the IFL, we start at the ten. When the ball snapped from the ten and in, wings, if you have a clear path and the play's not coming at you, get to the goal line then work back. Here the ball snapped at the one. As soon as that ball is snapped, these wings should be on the goal line, and they are. That's how we want it done. Unless the play is coming right at you, and for safety reasons, you need to get out of the way where you retreat into the backfield. Look at it again. And remember, at the same time, umpires, you're either stepping back to the goal line, or you're stepping up to the goal line when that ball is snapped from the ten and in no deviations. Fight through it, get to the goal line, umpires. And we're going to look at a play we looked at last week that was textbook perfection of goal line mechanics. Remember, at the snap, clear path, wing, get to the goal line. If you have to work back for a spot, then you come back for the spot. Watch our wing at the bottom of the screen. He's at the goal line, and he works back to the spot. Let's look at it again. This is perfection. This is what we want, wings you got a clear path like this wing does here. At the snap, get to the goal line. Then work back if you must. That's how we want it done. Nice job here. Look at our H at the top of the screen. We got fourth and three. This is not in the mechanics manual, but this wing knows what he's doing. Fourth and three. Reads pass. He slides down to the line to gain and is ready to rule on the line to gain. Look a little closer. He reads pass, goes down to the line to gain, and sets up ready to rule on the play while still watching his action. That's how we want it done. That's excellent work by a wing who knows what he's doing. 
Okay, here's a quiz question for you on spotting the ball. Now, it looks like the ball is going to hit the ground and it's going to bounce over the wall about at the two-yard line. And where's this ball going to be spotted? This crew's on top of it. This is just for your own information if you see it. Page 26 of the rule book. Great job by the crew. We're never going to spot the ball inside the five on this type of play. See page 26. Nice job by this crew. Our refs are doing an excellent job this year. Here we got a block scrimmage kick. Our referee sees the ball on the ground in player possession, signals, and sells it instantly. Nice job. No need to dig here. As soon as you see the ball on the ground in player possession, there's no need to dig, gentlemen. Do like this ref does. Signal, strong, and sell it. As we close out, let's listen to some of our refs who are mic'd on some of the vid swap tapes. Listen in. Legal defense. Number nine, we've not had the stains of the snap. Half the distance to goal, second down. We have a legal blitz. Number 95, first to the outside. Five yard penalty, automatic first down. All star, number 60 on the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. For the last play of the week, we might as well look at the last play of a game last week. This is the last play. A touchdown by the offense ties the game up. We talk about 100% focus. Look at our back judge. Tough call. You see our wing hustling down the sidelines. These guys did not take this play off. They maintained their focus at the end of the game. Look at it one more time. Excellent work. That's what we want, guys. 100% focus. And that ends uh, this week's video, guys. A couple of things before we get started for week number six. Uh, you've been doing a good job with the coaches. Just remember, the rules require the coaches to be within arm's length of the wall while the ball is live. And that's a big difference. While the ball is live, the coaches need to be on the walls. Between the plays, they can come out to the numbers and talk to their teams. So uh, use your discretion here. Remember... The requirement for them to be on the walls is only a requirement while the ball is live. So do use your discretion, but the coaches, we do want you back. Get in there, call your play, and get back to the wall, coach. And uh, guys, uh, we've got uh, over 60 officials in our group, and I'm only getting about 40, 30 to 40 hits on these videos every week, so it's uh, making me wonder maybe why we're having a few issues here and there that uh, you really got to look at these videos and find out how we want to do things and see how everyone else is doing. So please uh, encourage your crews to view these videos at least once a week. And uh, let's have a great week, six, six, six gentlemen, and I'll uh, talk to you next week. God willing.